Sam Baker, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Welcome. Hey, Sam. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so this is an interesting chat and I was just explaining to you around why I was so passionate and, ex and excited to get you on the show today because you share so much wisdom around the cycles that women go through about our periods and um, I myself have been on a journey of getting to know that part of myself and I was just sharing with you how it changed the relationship to me as a woman when I got to know that part of me and still getting to know that part of me so that's why I'm inspired to share this because I think any kind of tool that we can offer and, and wisdom that we can share on allowing people to access more of who they are is one of the most important things we can do. And this is such an important part. So I would love to understand my first question for you would be, why do you feel like this is an important part to get to know as a woman? Mm, gosh, there's so many reasons. The first one that comes to mind is to learn to love like learning to love all parts of ourselves, particularly the ones that we've been told are dirty or gross or shameful or a burden. I think probably most of us who grew up in the Western world have been conditioned to believe that our period is um, something to hide away, to not talk about, that's a bit gross and it's either annoying or right up on the spectrum to like like to debilitating like it's for you know for some and for some women it is you know having a period really does negatively impact their life um for like socioeconomic reasons for physical reasons I understand you know for emotional reasons for people who struggle with things like premenstrual dysphoric disorder like having a menstrual cycle does come with potential for a great deal of, of pain that is true but what I love about this menstrual cycle awareness work is it's not just about managing your period and knowing how to, you know, get by. It's actually about understanding the way that it works and the nature of the, of the like creative process within it and then optimising the different superpowers that we hold in every phase of the menstrual cycle and deepening into a greater self-understanding about who we are on, in every phase on every single day of our cycle because we change you know we're, we're not the same week to week day to day the hormonal fluctuations of the menstrual cycle ultimately mean that we are we're moving all of the time we're fluctuating and changing and I used to really loathe that inconsistency um, within myself because I felt that like consistency was a marker of success and being inconsistent was a marker of failure right so for me, learning to embrace the menstrual cycle, and I think um, this is true for many women who come to this work, is embracing the inconsistency, it's embracing all of the like the messiness, embracing all of the light and also the shadow that the menstrual cycle contains and, and learning ultimately how to love or at the very least accept, accept the nature of the cycle and also the nature of ourselves. And yeah, as you've described, you know, for women who are, wanting to to heal some more of their relationship with being a woman um it's a, it's an enormous shift to go from hating it being over it wishing it didn't exist for some people or just being not bothered by it even not really taking it into account to then oh loving having a cycle looking forward to having your period knowing who you are at each phase of the cycle and actually working with that and feeling empowered by it it's an enormous shift that can occur through this menstrual cycle awareness work yes um, and I think you know something that blew my mind when I heard when I first heard you speak of it was the actually the different phases right like I think I kind of just thought of it as you have your period and then you don't have your period but actually like the seasons change we in a month cycle change like the seasons and having an awareness around what how I showed up each day and what's what phase I was in blew my mind like in terms of how I work how I went to the gym how I changed like all of those things so I'd love to ex I would love for you to explain the phases and um, maybe we can go into depth on like what each, like how we show up in each phase and if it's the same for everyone. Absolutely. Great question. Tell me first, Sam, where are you in your cycle? 
at the moment. I'm day 14. So um, I think I'm just coming out or I'm just like going into summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel? Well, I was explaining to you, like I've, I've changed the way that I do interviews now because Mm -hmm. I find I do interviews great when I'm in my spring or my summer cycle. And Mm -hmm. I notice when I'm in autumn or winter, I'm just like not as present. Like I'm not as alert. I'm not as like on it. And so, um, yeah, I feel like summer is my kind of out there, more extroverted, more, Mm -hmm. um, community communicative um kind of space Mm -hmm. yeah exactly I love that cool so I'm on day 19 so I'm just a little bit further ahead than you and so I'm at the like tail end of my summer so you're kind of moving into your ovulatory phase and I'm, I'm on the other end of it um so so the summer of the cycle I think it's a great place to start is what is when we're talking about ovulation And the winter of the cycle is when we're talking about menstruation. So ultimately, the menstrual cycle is made up of these four different phases, two of which are like the poles of the cycle. You've got menstruation on one side, which is the winter. That's when we're bleeding, in your period, releasing the past cycle. And then we've got ovulation on the other side, which is the summer of the cycle. And it's the release of an egg. It's the fertile window in the menstrual cycle. And... You're either going to be, if you're currently in your menstruating years, menstruating or ovulating, or you're going to be moving in between those two points in the cycle, right? So the transition season that takes you from winter to summer is unsurprisingly the spring, and that's the pre-ovulatory phase. And then we've got the autumn of the cycle, which is the premenstrual phase, and that takes us back to where I'm moving into now in the next couple of days, which takes us then back down to menstruation. And so there are different superpowers and strengths and also vulnerabilities and tender points in every single one of these phases. And they are all distinct hormonally. So I thought, you know, as you just said earlier, Sam, that it's initially thought in my late teens and early 20s that the menstrual cycle was essentially that you just had your period for those maybe like five days of a month. And then the rest of the time was just the same. It was it was the same. And I was on the Um, hormonal contraceptive pill for a decade and the truth is that when you are on the pill that is actually your experience so you do have that withdrawal bleed and then you're taking hormones every day the same hormones for the rest of the month and so that is actually the experience of being on birth control so when I came off that I couldn't believe just how different I felt week to week and this is where I began to understand these different phases of the cycle so to run through them we have winter. So winter, as I said, menstruation, we're, we're bleeding on our period and hormones are at their lowest levels. So our female sex hormones are at their lowest levels so that they'll be here for the entire cycle. Not to mention that, you know, our body is undergoing the physiological process of releasing the entire past month of you know, our uterine lining through our blood. And so it's totally normal if we feel maybe a little bit more insular here, if we want to take some more time for ourselves. Um, it's a really lovely point in the cycle to rest. It's, it's an easy place to rest because the body just wants to rest and to recharge. Mm-hmm. But it's also a highly intuitive time and a highly connected time in terms of spiritual practice and connecting with ourselves and that um, like coming home to ourselves. This is really the phase in the cycle to do that within the reality of our life right I mean it might be nice to just block out five days every month and just like (laughs) not attend to anything else in our lives but that's not always the reality Mm -hmm. what I'm saying is like this is the moment to really nurture that that connection that you have with you here at menstruation and even that can shift like as I just described earlier that mindset around your period being a burden even just that shift of of upping the self-care here, taking more time for you, treating yourself to, you know, to lovely oils or like teas and foods and burning things that feel really lovely to you. Whatever, you know, your self-care rituals look like, this is the time to really hone in on those. And that, those actions can really shift um, that relationship with your period. Yeah, I love that. And I want to touch on something that you said there. You said it's a release for the month. Mm -hmm. So is that an 
also an emotional or an energetic or what else is happening besides just like, is it cleansing our body? That's like really interesting. Yeah, it is definitely. I mean, Sam, I wish I could point you to loads of research and scientific studies on this and say really clearly um, what women experience here. Unfortunately, there is, is such so little research. We do know that um, there is a reset in the body. You know, the reproductive system is essentially resetting for the next cycle to come. Absolutely, it can be an emotional reset as well, particularly for women who do experience a lot of emotional tension in that premenstrual week. Often it can feel like just sweet relief when the period does begin because it's like all of that intensity and all of that holding that we've been carrying for the past cycle is then just you know we can we can release and it does it does happen naturally but it can also be um strengthened through intention so if you set the intention at menstruation to to release uh an argument you had with your partner or to release self-doubt that you're having at work or to release something that you're carrying that you don't want to carry anymore then you can set that intention at menstruation to let that go and it is just like pressing like a big red reset button and certainly that can be emotionally that can be spiritually that can be creatively sexually like we get to choose what that will be every single cycle and I really love that is that we get to just we can begin again but we but you do need to have that intention to really zone in on what that's going to be does that make sense yeah absolutely and I think um why uh, it makes me think about like when people and I know there may be so many different issues or health challenges that people are experiencing as to why they might have a painful period or a painful bleeding. Um, however, my, my, my mind goes to is perhaps that part of them releasing an emotional charge or uh, something mm-hmm. quite full on in their system. And so they are experiencing a tough bleed for that month and um, having awareness and intention around that could help that process or have you experienced anything like that? Yeah, I definitely have. And look, I will say that if you're consistently experiencing painful periods, then you need to to do some inquiry because we're not designed to suffer. And so if you are consistently having painful periods, then definitely get that checked out. But let's say that you normally regularly have, um, easy pain-free periods and then you have a really stressful month or there's a lot of emotion um, going on whether that's like a breakup or a career change or just like you know a shift within yourself it is very possible that you're going to feel that at menstruation there is a real potential here for grief it is essentially a death in the cycle it's also a rebirth so it's both Mm. But there is a there is a death here and there is a sense of, of release and loss. And certainly I have found when I've had either very stressful cycles or very highly emotional cycles, and I mean the entire cycle, I really feel that at menstruation. Even throughout this um, pandemic, I have heard from so many women and I've experienced the same, a lot of grief coming up mm. at menstruation. So not necessarily even just physical pain, but just a lot of emotion. Mm. and. I personally can't attribute that to anything specific in my life, that grief, but I can feel the, you know, we feel the the collective pain. Right. And so just being mindful of that and, um, and taking note of it, charting it, just letting it go through, you know, letting it go through and letting your body release what it needs to release. Again, if you're consistently experiencing overwhelming feelings of grief and or depression or anxiety around menstruation, like that again, isn't is it normal it's you know that's something there that we need that needs to be processed and looked at Mm. but definitely I hear this all the time from women really who feel like we're so sensitive aren't we and we're so you know we feel so much for the world and yeah it can definitely come through that release of the body and so the more that we can do to allow that release and not constrict it Mm. will help so whatever works um, whether it's movement or journaling um meditation talking it out with a friend you know I personally love like dancing and shaking and you know and sweating and just letting it come through just crying and just feeling it will help to release rather than holding it in constricting and and letting that pain stay in the body yeah for sure now I always find in this in winter for me um 
and I feel like you gave me a bit of permission slip when I understood this whole process. Um, but I would force myself to exercise, right? And wonder why my I couldn't pick up the same amount of weight or wonder why I felt weak and wonder why, like, you know, all these things. And when I started to understand that just in this phase, I'm just, I want more yoga. I want more like softer movements. I want to be more gentle on my body. Is that something that we often experience in like the winter phase or is that perhaps just like kind of unique to me or like is there kind of um, any guidance around what would help that kind of phase? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a great question. I think that realisation, uh, again, of that inconsistency piece, I don't know about you, Sam, but like I grew up reading things like Women's Fitness Magazine as a you know teenager that advocated for like seven day fitness plans and 30 day yoga challenges, you know, like my yoga studio still does a 30 day yoga challenge. And I just think like, it just doesn't work. For women. No. You know, like it sounds great. Doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so like you, when I'm bleeding, I, I'm less likely to pick up the weights. I'm much more inclined to do some yin yoga or go for like a nice walk in nature and just do some stretching and just, be kind to my body like I said hormones are at their lowest levels like we aren't yeah peak you know on peak form here some people find that like that at menstruation exercise really helps with cramping and that it feels really good to move the body and you know I think it always it's always a good idea to move the body but the way that the way that we do it um is going to, to probably different to how it will at ovulation when we've got surge of hormones where you are you know right now and yeah physical energy is probably much higher than it was two weeks ago for you right yeah exactly but I think it's about that being gentle on ourselves you know it's like these the like you say the 30-day programs and the the constant kind of even patriarchal world that we live in that work doesn't work to the the female monthly cycle it works to typically the the masculine 24 hour cycle um we're not the same and I think we put a lot of pressure and and are quite hard on ourselves for like oh I didn't go to the gym this week or I didn't do it and like oh, I've fallen off the bandwagon or whatever it is and I think for me understanding this gave me that awareness around it wasn't me falling off the wagon it was simply my body trying to speak to me and I was like shaming myself for it so I think even just having that awareness around how you're feeling and honoring that is such a liberating kind of experience for a woman it is and this is what menstrual cycle awareness offers as a mindfulness charting practice every day all we're doing is just checking in every day like what day am I on today as I said to you like what day are you on how are you feeling that's it that's literally all we have to do every day it's just cool what day of my cycle I'm on today what season am I in yeah how am I feeling and therefore from that place what do I need today how can I optimize this energy how can I take care of myself accordingly how can I look forward to what's coming you know I'm on day 19 as I said so I can see you know the next week's going to be a lot slower yeah um moving more into the feminine yin half of the cycle rather than the like masculine that I've been in you know it's been a very productive couple of weeks over here and um, it's been great. You know, I love that feeling of like productivity and agency and getting things done and forward facing stuff. Brilliant. Mm. But like, I don't want to be in that energy all of the time. Like a, it's boring. B I'll burn out it, and C it's just not embracing the wholeness of who I really am. And mm. so the menstrual cycle gives us this opportunity every month to, to dive deep into the, into that yin energy and that softness and the feminine and to be able to hang out in that space. And I love that so much about this, about the cycle. It's so perfectly balanced. But as you said, we don't live in a world that understands, celebrates or is orchestrated around the female monthly rhythm. We live in a world that is dictated by the masculine. And so it's not easy to do that. It's not always easy to slow down, to check in and to actually maybe move differently to how the world would like us to or our, even our own personal expectations. Mm. The rewards are just, it's so evident so quickly, you know, particularly for women who are exhausted, burnt out, stressed, over it, frustrated, to just begin to like to track and to see those weeks and those days where maybe your body is asking for a bit more softness and space, to just start to give that to yourself. 
it's really incredible how quickly um, a lot of menstrual issues resolve, but also that like lovely strengthening, um, you know, happens within. Mm, I love that. Okay, so that's winter. Um, as we move into spring, spring, yeah, as we move into mm. spring, what do we start to experience? Okay, so the hormone estrogen here is um, one of our female sex hormones, and it is on the move it is surging it's increasing and so as it increases in the body in the lead up to ovulation we often experience that as like like, like leaving the period cave there's this like lightness <laughs> in the body there's this yeah. like, right there's this like momentum and this surge in motivation and focus and wanting to to get things moving so in my spring I'm personally always surrounded by like calendars and post-it notes and I'm planning and I'm you know, I'm really thinking ahead. So it is more of a, a masculine kind of, you know, mental energy. It very much is about getting up out into the world and building that, you know, building the ego and building that your agency and, and starting to build a bit more skin after being in more vulnerable places for the past couple of weeks. And so, you know, for some women, they absolutely love this phase because they can operate more easily in the world um and it just feels really good it feels great to get to get things moving it feels great to be productive and to you know tick things off the to-do list um it's, it can also be a really sensitive time for some people as well because it can feel quite vulnerable having been in that like very yin space maybe for the past 10 days or so to then to then step back out into the world. It can kind of feel like a deer in headlights for some people. And so for some, it can feel a bit, you know, anxious and quite tender and so they need to move more gently here. So it's important to check in and see how that, how that is for you, that transition from bleeding to then moving into that pre-ovulatory phase. How do you experience it? Mm, I love that you said that because it is a transition. And I think sometimes, like sometimes for me, it's a direct like, boom, I'm in spring, let's go. And then sometimes it's like a, oh gosh, like, am I like, when's the spring thing going to kick in? Like it's an, almost like a delayed onset. So mm -hmm. it's different, like depending on, I'm pretty sensitive to the energies of the planet. Like I'm all like all of those things. And so it really depends on what else is happening. But I find for me, it's a transition and sometimes it's really quick and I, and I love spring. And then sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, nope, I'm still going to hang out with the chocolate and just like take my time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I love that observation that it is always, you know, it can be different. Menstrual cycle awareness will definitely help us to identify patterns within yeah. the cycle over a period of time, but each cycle is different and it has its own unique flavor as well. And so I think the, the tendency can sometimes be after we've been doing this work for a little while is to assume that say, for example, day 10 is always going to feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. You're always going to have that spring burst of energy but maybe for this cycle day 10 you just don't and so we have to listen to what we're actually having you know an embodied experience of today rather than getting caught up in how day 10 normally is so I'm really glad that you mentioned that because I think it's important to, to yeah. know that it won't be this archetypal cycle like every month It'd be really helpful if it was maybe <laughs> it would make my job a lot easier <laughs> Just, yeah it's just not the case so that's spring and it's yeah it is a transition season we're building up to something here and that's always an important query to make when I'm working with somebody who does um, find spring challenging we talk a lot about transition and their relationship with change and how do they feel when they're building up to something and that anticipation but they're not there yet I think there's often you know we want to rush from zero to ten we mm -hmm. just want to get to the place that we're going and um and so often we'll work on like hey how does it feel to slow down and how does it feel to to, to sit in that unknown and to not be there yet um and that's something I've also personally worked on in my spring too is just valuing the transition rather than always wanting to like rush to the destination yeah so I love that uh -huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. this is like a good time for decisions and things right at this point in time great yeah. time to make decisions there's a lot of clarity and focus particularly if we took some time out to rest administration and to get clear on our intentions for the next cycle maybe to set some priorities for the next cycle and to just like nurture that self-connection 
ideally then we're going to be moving into spring with a clear understanding of what this next cycle is going to be about. And so we can make more decisions, we can plan. Um, and it's a great time for learning, for taking in new information, cognitive mm. function here, memory retention um, is, is strong. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great phase definitely in terms of productivity, moving out into the world, starting yeah. things you know for somebody who maybe struggles getting projects off the ground this is a great time to schedule in you know those tasks that are required to start something new I wouldn't recommend say for example starting a new like self-care routine or a new project say on those final few days of your cycle like that's not an ideal time to start mm -hmm. something because your body is very much in the energy of closing and wrapping things up and Spring is a really great time to get things moving. So it's not just naturally supported by the energy of your body. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I find like you begin to move into that more radiant um, space as well. Like mm -hmm. you, your energy is different, right? The energy you attract, what you attract and, and how you're showing mm -hmm. off is different. And so that kind of edges into summer when you kind of at your peak of radiance and ovulation. So okay. tell me more about summer. Yeah, I love summer. It's great. <laughs> I love all the seasons, but I, yeah. I find my two favorites are menstruation and ovulation. Mm -hmm. I really love the like the power of, of those of those points of release. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so summer is is the fertile phase in the menstrual cycle. So here we are if our intention is to conceive um, and to make a baby, then this is this is the moment in the cycle where you know, we want to be focusing our attention is just leading up to ovulation. And at ovulation, so on that on that as well, is that like if you're not wanting to make a baby, um, yes, you're wanting to be more careful around those times. Exactly. So that lead up to ovulation, like taking note of cervical fluid and that wetness, that is a sign that ovulation is is on its way. So it is really important to, to know for contraception or conception where the fertile window falls in your cycle. And again, this will change from cycle to cycle. So it's not enough to know that to say that like from day 10 to to 16, for example, is your fertile window because every cycle will be different. So it's another important part of cycle awareness is, is checking in with that cervical fluid every day. And um, there are other methods as well, including temperature, mm -hmm. but just getting to know your fertile window is such an empowering practice for women to, to learn. Mm -hmm. Whole other podcast episode, but definitely <laughs> something that I'm going to like gently nudge you towards. <laughs> Um, so at ovulation, the summer of the cycle, you know, if we think about summer of the year, it's summer here in London right now. Everybody's outdoors, connecting, socializing, the days are longer, they're lighter, there's just this like buzz in the air. And the summer, the inner summer of our cycle feels the same. So we have the peak levels of estrogen. So estrogen has like increased all the way up, and estrogen is the hormone that is responsible for getting the body prepared and ripe for ovulation. So her like whole thing is about like getting you up and out of the house and finding a mate basically. Like she's really interested in you feeling amazing, looking amazing. So our skin is, you know, estrogen. <laughs> I wish I could like bottle ovulation skin because our skin is just naturally glowier, hair mm. is bouncier, our face literally becomes more symmetrical around ovulation. Like oh I okay, know. I need to talk about more about this. I've mm -hmm. literally have been having a discussion with a friend recently about like, is my like my face looks different at different times? Like, and I've been so rattled by it. Yeah, this is the thing that we go through. It's true. Yeah, what? it's true. That is something I can I can direct you towards a scientific study on, which is pretty cool. So what happened? Yeah, yeah. The way that the hormones are working in the body. So estrogen is literally making you more beautiful because. <laughs> On a, on a very, you know, like paleolithic level, the idea here is about is about procreating. So yeah. that is her, like that is her job. Estrogen's job is to make you look as attractive as you possibly can <laughs> to find a potential mate. And so, of course, that's not everybody's intention at ovulation, but we can still use that radiance. We can still use that creative power to, the, you know, the same power that literally births humanity. Mm 
we can use that same power here to create, to share, to connect, to be with the people that we love. You know, patience is higher here generally, resilience is higher, confidence is higher, turn on is higher. Like it can be such an extraordinary time. Yeah. Um, and I really love it. Yeah. For some people though, and I've, I've got to say this because it's important, some people don't experience ovulation in this way. For some people it's exhausting the process of ovulating of ovulating actually drains their energy right. they don't feel fantastic here it's almost like it can feel too much mm. for their the energy is is too big um and so it's important again to understand like maybe ovulation for you is actually more of a tender time maybe if you do have um if you're on a, a, a pregnancy journey or you have been and there are some complicated issues for you around fertility and, and pregnancy and becoming a mother or even your relationship with yourself as a mother or with your own mother. Mm. These can all come up in this inner summer phase and it's big stuff. You know, it is really big stuff. So just like there's a lot of light here, there is also potential for shadow and ovulation. And I'm always you know, really cautious because just because my experience is of a, a positive nature I, I know that for some women this can also be a really tough time in the menstrual cycle for all sorts of reasons mm, that's that's really valid to to say um so this is really interesting because I'm very into archetypes right like feminine archetypes mm -hmm. and I notice in like my summer phase how much more I'm wanting to be tapped into like the sensual archetypes or like the, you know, the ones where you feel sexier, you feel more like you can, um, you know, you want to be on the, like a lioness or whatever it is. Um, and so as you're speaking, all of these, like I'm kind of like checking off all of the different archetypes that fit into each phase. Mm. And I think that's a really beautiful thing as well to acknowledge like where we want to, you know, maybe dress up a little bit more sexy or feel like, you know, wear a nice underwear or a bra or in like a, a certain phase or a season to really bring that summer out in us or bring whatever seat phase we're like out in us. Um, so there's going to be a whole other episode on archetypes because that's a whole other conversation. But like, I really just like that kind of intersection yeah. of the two. Absolutely. And for some people, the seasons work really well to understand the cycle. For others, they really resonate with the archetypes. And um, what I love about using an archetypal lens to understand the menstrual cycle and the, and the feminine archetype specifically is that it does connect then very easily with our whole female life journey. You mm. know, so we can look at, say, the maiden years of our life and then connect those with the spring phase of the cycle. We can look at the mother years in our life and connect those with the summer and then the wild woman in the, those um, perimenopausal years and then our crone years looking at, um, you know, postmenopausal years and beyond. I love connecting with both the mother, the generous mother energy at summer, but also very much the, like, erotic slut energy, you know, yeah. just that, like, sexual, like, lies, you said, lioness, just very sensual and just so, to, like, that turn on is so powerful. Mm. And again, like that can feel amazing for some women to access that if they feel safe to do so. But, but for others, it can, it can be, too, you know, it's, it's too much. Um, and maybe they're not ready to explore that archetype yet. But yeah, summer offers so much, so much like sensuality and sexuality and so much power to explore there for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. So I find for me, it's a good time for communication. It's a good time for, um, you know, uh, setting boundaries or like being more kind of in my power. What is that? Something, is that just me? Or is that like something that is, is within that phase? Yeah, definitely. That's all definitely in that phase. I think it's, it's a good sign that you're setting boundaries in your summer because I find that really hard. <laughs> I, love I feel like in my summer, oh my God, in my summer, I am just like, I am everybody's like, I, like, what do you want? I will do it for you. I will give it to you. Like I just really step into that mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. So I love hearing that, that you, it's important to be boundaried in the summer. That's definitely my, my vulnerable point in my summer is that I just, I, I step too far into that generosity and I, and I give and I can often burn out. So I'm always working on trying to be more boundary in my summer because God, the summer woman for me is just, it's just, yeah, take me like whatever you want. I would do it for you. you know? mm. So I love hearing that, that you've got some really clear boundaries at ovulation. That's awesome. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it feels like it feels empowering to me. So I feel like that's where it's coming from. Like it's coming from this empowered place to speak my truth or to honor what I need or to like stand up for what I believe in or you know, it's like that kind of energy. Like I feel very okay. centered and empowered in that. And it's mm. interesting that you say that because I probably find more like my spring is the time where I, I will lose boundaries. Like the spring's like coming back out of the shell and it's like a rebirth. And so it's like, I'm here, there and everywhere. And I'm wanting to do a lot of things at once, um, you know, spin a lot of different plates. So that's probably my, my phase where I'm less boundaried. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great observation. I think a lot of people will relate to that. And I, I definitely have in the past. I've really had to work on boundaries in my in my spring for mm. that reason. Just getting so excited and just it's, like, yeah. it's like, oh, great, I'm back, I'm back. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Uh, a place in the cycle that is a really important for place for people to learn to set boundaries. It's important in every phase of the cycle, but definitely then moving into that autumn mm. week, that premenstrual week, mm-hmm. because if we try to maintain the same levels of everything, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, sexual, that we have had in that summer week, we're going to have a tricky time. It's, it's, there's so much change here. So after ovulation, estrogen dips and progesterone comes in. That's the dominant hormone here in this last part of the cycle. And progesterone is all about nurturing a potential pregnancy. That's its job. And so this hormone is, you know, where estrogen was all about like getting us up and getting us out and like that, you know, being out in the world and that mother energy, that maiden energy. Now progesterone is like, okay, let's keep you safe and let's keep you really cozy and like let's come back in here because you've been out in the world doing all of these great things and creating and connecting and having a great time. And now it's it's time to, to come back in here and to, to connect and to soften and to slow down and to shift those gears down because menstruation's coming and we don't want to go from 10 to zero right away because they're going to like crash at the door of menstruation and it's going you know it's going to be tough and that's what I think a lot of women experience is trying to maintain that same level all throughout the cycle so that when their period arrives it comes with pain it comes with frustration it comes with like this like like feeling rather than slowing down so that we can more gracefully hopefully transition into our winter so really autumn again is that transition so just like spring was moving us up to ovulation now autumn is bringing us back down again to menstruation and this this whole new hormonal landscape really does require an entirely different approach to to pretty much everything i um uh, talking about exercise, yesterday I had laid out my mat and kettlebells. I was going to do, I've been doing like kettlebell workouts for the past couple of weeks and um, more like high intensity stuff. And I laid out my mat and I just, I just did not feel like it. I was just mm-hmm. like, you know what? I'm just not in the mood for this today. I'm just not in the mood for that like strength kind of high intensity way of moving my body. So I just turned on some music really loud and for 45 minutes I just did like a yoga dance sort of thing where I just like stretched and moved around and shook and just like came back into my body and and I still moved you know I still exercised but it was in a way that was honoring where I had now moved to in my menstrual cycle and honoring what I really needed on that day and this is what the autumn is asking us to do it's asking us to set those boundaries to to say no to sort of tune out the rest of the world for a bit and to to come back here because this is the moment in the cycle to reflect it's the moment in the cycle to honor our truth it's the moment in the cycle to embrace our shadow and our frustrations and our and listen to those like listen to those niggles that often come up here you know sometimes this phase can be ripe for things like self-doubt, self-criticism, like that's not working, this isn't working. And I'm not saying that they're always 100% correct because they're not, but it is the moment to do some reflecting on what is and isn't working in your life and where you're loving spending your time and energy and where you're not. This is the moment where that will all come to the surface. Um, And so we can let that come unconsciously and probably have a bit of a bad, a bit of a hard time with premenstrual symptoms 
or we can again be intentional about it, create space for that reflection and listen to those niggles. And I've seen over and over again, women who really struggle premenstrually start to open up more space and softness in their premenstrual week and actually begin to really love the autumn phase and love the autumn woman and love their wild self and, and really enjoy like that, that just bullshit free nature of that week leading up to bleeding. Uh, it's a really cool thing to watch. Mm. So I don't know if I have a favorite because I've gotten to, I lived in Canada for a bit, so I've gotten to love all the seasons, um, but I love autumn. I love autumn. And for that exact reason, like it's the transition. It's also like where I go my, my most creative, like I'm talking, I want to I want to like do red wine on the floor with massive sheets of paper and mind mapping and like drawing diagrams or creating new things like, you know, creating frameworks or writing stories or journal. Like it's very creative energy for me. Um, And it's also, it brings that softness and the, um, yeah, the time like to exhale, the time to like, so I find like, I just find that whole phase just really beautiful and mm. relieving almost. I love hearing that. So yeah, I feel the same way. And look, I'm not going to lie. I do have some premenstrual weeks where I'm just like, oh God, hurry up and bleed. Like I just, <laughs> I'm ready to let go now, like set it out. But when I can be, when I have got the space and when I am able to, you know, to really create that for myself and often I'm my own, you know, biggest hurt hurdle that I have to get over is to just like oh, we say all. No. No. <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah like, it's like hey to say no I will literally write it in my calendar at the beginning of my cycle over the weeks that I the days that I know I'll be in my autumn like it's okay to say no like leave space here because we forget sometimes you know and then we get to autumn and then we've got this full schedule and we've committed to various responsibilities and then either end up rescheduling or cancelling or feeling guilty if we do or or, Mm. or still attending to them and then being exhausted so I really try to give myself as much space here as I possibly can and then just you know without making plans and just see what I feel like doing like you it is often like being scrolled on the floor with art or like journals and yeah um, yeah red wine and tea and candles and just like it's it can feel like yeah relief is such a great word particularly if we really have optimize the cycle by by getting things moving and by connecting with people and really being in this energy of the spring and summer then it it does feel like a relief and it feels okay to step back and to be like cool do you know what I'm going to celebrate everything that I have achieved and created and everything I've nurtured and who I've connected with for this past couple of weeks um that's great and now that has come to an end and now this next phase is actually about giving some of that back to myself and that feels really great I I know that when I've had a cycle where for whatever reason I've procrastinated or resisted or I just haven't optimized that spring and summer in an ideal way Um, and I see this a lot in clients who struggle with getting things off the ground they're so in their feminine that they really struggle to like do the things that they want to do in their shadow feminine I should say that but they get to autumn and just have this restlessness, like this listlessness yeah. of like, oh, another cycle's gone and I didn't do the thing I said I was going to do and I didn't do X, Y, and Z and I haven't, you know, I haven't connected and I haven't been out in the world and built that that agency, right? So then they get to autumn and feel really frustrated that there's almost like there's nothing to reflect on. There's mm-hmm. nothing here to edit or to hone or refine because you know, didn't get a chance to actually use their powers in the other part of the cycle, which is that. Mm, That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, autumn is often a very emotional roller coaster of times, right? Like there's a lot of irritability, like irritable kind of feelings or moody feelings or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that is actually a really interesting um, kind of to look back and observe what you've achieved or you didn't achieve in the spring and summer. And then understand that that might be why I didn't I haven't looked at it like that before but I I like that yeah so it's an interesting inquiry to make Mm. I think taking a moment to celebrate and I will do this today because like I said I'm definitely crossing over into my autumn Mm. um 
to pause and to celebrate. You know, we all need to get better at doing this, right? Mm -hmm. And to look back at the past couple of weeks of this cycle and to just really take a moment to celebrate everything I've worked on, the relationships I've nurtured, how I've taken care of myself, the things that I've been doing and working on and achieving and, mm -hmm. and to just feel content with that and to celebrate that. It's sort of like it buffers you up for the potential emotional ups and downs and maybe some of that self-doubt that can naturally arise in the autumn phase so that you you can say well actually do you know what in the critic like I hear you going off here that I haven't done enough or I'm not enough or I haven't blah 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 blah, blah. boring mm -hmm. but you know actually I have like this has been a really I'm mm. really proud of myself this cycle and that just it, it can just take a few minutes of just writing down a few things that you're really pleased with mm -hmm. and just using that in, in that autumn phase to stay connected to, to the truth, um, which can sometimes, yeah, can come out in like quite intense ways in the autumn phase, definitely. Yeah, I think that's been quite a game changer, you know, like I think I was someone who was very hard on myself if I didn't achieve the to-do list in the day. And so mm -hmm. understanding this whole process, like instead of getting – hard on myself or, sh or down on myself each day I get to the I, I reflect at the end of the my cycle and I'm like it all it, like the all of the dots seem to connect at the end of the cycle it's like I got everything that I wanted to do within the month done but I used to think I needed to get it done in a day when I don't work like that like I'll be like so fast and efficient probably in my spring and my summer weeks and like tick a lot of boxes. And then I am more in my flow and my body and my self-love and all of that stuff in the, so it like all, all evens out. But I think it, you know, a game changer for me was understanding that reflection period and, and not being down on myself on a day. Like sometimes it will creep in and I have to remind myself like, Oh, but by the way, you're on this day and you've, you've still got this amount of left in your cycle. Like stop comparing yourself to, the men that you work with or like other people who are in different phases. And I think that's so important for people just mm. to understand. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. There's a couple of things there that are so brilliant. One, like, yes, we have more than just one day or even just one week. You know, starting to create anything with the, through the lens of having an entire month, but your whole cycle to work on this. I just, I really love that. And understanding how each season of the cycle uh, nurtures the next you know like we're using it all like it's it's all together it's this incredible like ecosystem that that nurtures each other in the more that we can optimize one phase the more that that helps you know the flow of the mm. of the entire cycle and the next and so I often say like if that you're having issues in one season of your cycle then look back to see how you spent the the phase before like did mm. something what was going on there for you, you know, and so many things are out of our control, like maybe something really stressful happened. And so you didn't get to, to take action in your spring, like you intended. That's okay. You know, it's not about trying to perfect it, yeah. but just acknowledging that if you get to summer, for example, and you're at ovulation and you just feel exhausted, what went on for you in your spring? Did you try and do too much? Was it, did something really stressful happen in your life? And having that understanding that like it, it's a continuum and so it's natural that each phase, you know, will affect how the next one feels. Yes, 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 yes. So I'd love to go into a little bit of complexity now that we have a broad understanding of like the phases and what that means, because I am forever fascinated with how like I begin to sync up with my sisters who I'm hanging around or like um, that type of thing. So I'd love to understand more about how, why we shift, like why might I be bleeding on the full moon and then all of a sudden I'm now bleeding on the half moon like why does this why does this happen and how do we sync up with other people mm, great question it's one that I can't give you a really clear answer to I think that this is so unique to the individual and I always really want to encourage women to to tune into what your intuition is telling you about why your cycle might be um, thinking with people in your life or not or where you're bleeding on the full and new moon I can say that again there's no research at all that um, clarify you know that um, confirms that women sync up with each other but it's definitely been my experience and it's, it's, definitely, it's just like <laughs> so much so much to say that it does happen and we know that in you know ancient cultures and indigenous communities that women did bleed together and and there was a lot of you know beautiful ritual around that and a lot of celebration around that um 
but you know it's it's you know we're still waiting for other research to catch up why does it happen you know i think that we 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 feel each other and particularly if we're we've got a deep connection with somebody you know my sisters and i would always would always sync up um, when we lived together. Mm. I've definitely lived with close girlfriends where we've synced up. And then I've lived with some women who I haven't, you know, and and that's been the, the case as well. In terms of bleeding with the moon, the if you're bleeding around the new moon, so the dark moon, if you go outside at night and there's no moon in the sky, that's considered more of a traditional um, menstrual cycle bleed and, and sinking with the moon so it's a sign of fertility and of wanting to you know maybe have a family and the, the yeah the more traditional sense of, of mother I suppose is, is bleeding with the new moon there's a beautiful book by author Miranda Gray called Red Moon which I really recommend for anybody who's more curious about the mythology of the menstrual cycle in the moon and if we're bleeding around a full moon that is more of a like rebellious menstrual cycle it's kind of more of like somebody who perhaps necessarily isn't interested in having children right now and their creative energy is going into birth projects and um and ideas that aren't necessarily about creating a family it's it's something else it's i think i've also heard it described as like a more of a witchy mm -hmm cycle um i've moved between new moon and full moon bleeds the entire time i've been charting my cycle mm -hmm. i often bleed at a um at a waxing moon so like a um the gibbous just before a full moon and i was born under that under that lunar phase so that was mm -hmm. the lunar phase. that's where the moon was in when i was born and i've always found that really interesting i haven't read a lot on that mm -hmm. but i i've always found that really interesting that i always sometimes sit just before the full moon and that's exactly where i that's the lunar phase that i was born under and so there's so many different ways of looking at the moon i always encourage people to check in with where the lunar cycle is when you're menstruating without getting too caught up in trying to get your cycle to a certain place because I think we have to trust our bodies as well and like where they're at and how they're syncing up with the natural cycles around us. Um, but yeah, I know that for some people it does, it does really mean a lot to them to be, to be synced with either a full or a new moon bleed. Um, and there are definitely lots of different things that you can read up about that in terms of like having a light open at night um, around ovulation to try to get your body to sync ovulation up with the full moon and and all sorts of things. But I think it's so unique to the individual. How do you feel about your relationship with the lunar cycle and your um, menstrual cycle? Yeah, like I, mine's, I'm usually bleeding around the new moon um, or just slightly after or just slightly before. So it's typically around that. Um, but I have found that I can bounce between as well. Like, you know, all of a sudden be like, oh, now I'm on the full moon. Like, and it's, and it's really, and it's like, how did, I don't even remember that happening. Like, I don't even remember how that shifted or changed. Um, but I typically find that mostly I'm new moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does that resonate with you, the idea of it being a more like fertile, traditional mother cycle? I mean, that triggers me a little, little bit. <laughs> um, I'm like, oh, yep, there's that mother thing again. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And I think it makes a lot of sense around the nurturer that I am. Like it's more of a, I, I'm not wanting to have a family right at this moment, but um, I have within me and genetically, I'm much more of a nurturer. Um, and so for me, I think the takeaway in that is I want to pay more attention as to when I am bleeding and what mood I'm in and what's happening in my life. If I'm more, if I'm birthing something into the world in a creative project and if that shifts and changes where I'm bleeding or if I'm again back in that nurture state. And if it's, I'd be, I'm really curious, that's something that I would take away and, and start to start to be, pay more attention to because I notice I'm very connected to dreams. So I notice that um, when I'm more in that creative space, I'll have a lot of birth dreams, like giving birth and whatever. And it's not necessarily to a baby. It's like in my dream, it's to a baby, but it's because there's something that's wanting to birth in this plane. Yeah. 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 And so I think adding in the moon thing would be uh, the next level of what I can understand. Yeah. It's just a gorgeous mirror, you know, the, the moon. I think it, it can just, it can really prompt something within uh, so say for example you're bleeding and you notice that you have 
you know, more energy maybe than you normally would and you look outside and it's a full moon like that might that mirror of the moon to be like oh yeah I do actually have more energy hmm. yeah the moon full I have, I have energy. okay cool I'm gonna work you know with that too or maybe we look outside and the moon is is full and our energy is really low and we think oh god I'm not in line with the moon right now like mm-hmm. at all like my energy is actually really low and so it's just a prompt you know there's so many things that we can use as prompts that just sort of spark an insight that comes from within mm-hmm. and the moon can really you know offer that opportunity to be like cool do I feel like I'm where the moon is today no I, I don't or yes I do yeah. um, and it can and just be what's happening for that moon as well right like yeah. okay well what is this moon about and is that a reflection of what I could go into totally that's not something I've, I've dug too much in but there are definitely some teachers I follow who who really work with the astrological like, sign that the that the moon is in and then how that impacts on the menstrual mm. cycle as well. And that's always really, I've always been really fascinating. I can't mm. speak to it too much, but definitely then, you know, there's so many more cycles that we yeah. can to continue to talk about. Yes, it's the seasons. Yes, it's the lunar cycle, but the astrological cycles that we're living yeah. in all the time too. There's so much juice there as well. Mm. So if you're on contraception, is this... <sighs> Like, let's talk about that firstly. I would love to talk about the effect on your cycle if you are taking the pill or on some sort of contraception. And does it essentially numb out all these phases or would you feel these phases in a different way? And I know this could be a hard conversation or Mm -hmm. um, um, challenging for people to hear perhaps. Yeah. Being on birth control, hormonal contraception is such a personal choice. And yeah. I think that we all need to make the right decision for us, wherever we are in our in our fertile years. And look, I took the pill for 10 years. Um, so I'm certainly, you know, you know, judging or shaming anybody who, who chooses to take it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's important to know what it does. Because I didn't know, you know, I didn't understand what the pill actually does. And essentially it's suppressing ovulation, which is how it works because that's how it prevents pregnancy is by suppressing ovulation. So as we've just walked through the seasons together, if you can imagine that ovulation isn't happening, so that key event, you know, like the event really in the menstrual cycle is really even more than menstruation. Like menstruation can't occur without ovulation ovulation is really the star of the show in the menstrual cycle and it's ovulation that determines that 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 lovely rise in estrogen that gives us the spring it's ovulation that characterizes the summer phase and it's also ovulation that leads to that increase in progesterone that gives us the autumn phase and then ultimately the winter of menstruation so if you're taking birth control you're essentially not experiencing ovulation and then not really experiencing the seasons at all so the withdrawal bleed that we have when we're taking hormonal contraception isn't a real period in the sense that it's it's a withdrawal bleed of of not having of not taking those hormones for for those certain days so it might still feel like a period and for the 10 years that I took it I thought it was a period um, but it's not because it's there's there's been no ovulation it's just a release of of the blood that has built up over the past month um, and so some people tell me that they they feel like they're when they're on birth control they feel like they're on maybe in the same season all of the time. And often that season is autumn. They often tell me when I describe the seasons to them that they're kind of experiencing that autumn all of the time. And like you and I have both just said, Sam, that, that we enjoy our autumn and mm. it's a season that we've really come to love and value. I wouldn't want to be there all the time though. <laughs> no, I love all of the things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want all of the flavours. <laughs> exactly. Like give me all of the flavours. The reason why I love my autumn so much, as I said before, is because, you know, I have had yes. those, those other seasons, yeah. right? Um, some people tell me that they still like, they, they do still feel a subtle energetic shift of moving between the winter spring summer and autumn and I'm not about you know I'm not here to tell anybody what they do or don't experience Mm. um I can say that you're certainly not experiencing ovulation which ultimately means you're not experiencing that hormonal ebb and flow Mm. but if somebody does still feel like they that they experience this that energetic movement of of that energy then great you know I awesome like use that and if you still want to chart use that you know 
should I use that withdrawal bleed from hormonal contraception as your winter and, and, and certainly chart, maybe borrow the moon if you're on hormonal contraception where you don't bleed. Mm. Um, that can happen too. So for some like the coil or um, the implant, for some people, they're not experiencing any kind of bleeding at all, in which case if you still want to chart the seasons, then borrow the lunar cycle. As we just said, you could use the new moon as your winter phase and then the full moon as your summer and then and then lean on that framework. Um, mm. And that goes to anybody who's currently not menstruating, whether it's because of um, amenorrhea or pregnant, breastfeeding, menopausal, mm. that lunar cycle is always there to lean on as a, as a framework that mirrors the menstrual cycle too. So I think when it comes to the pill, we're still learning so much about how it works. It's still a relatively new drug, sure. um, but it, it, definitely will, it definitely will change your experience of the menstrual cycle. Mm. I often hear as well, like people that are, like women that are trying to come off it and just um come back to their natural cycle and rhythm it's that it's quite intense and full-on and they don't know how to manage it and so they feel like it's they're so out of control that they go back on to be able to manage it so I don't know if you've had any if you have anything to share on kind of like the process Mm -hmm. of of coming off it like I personally was on it for maybe five years at the very beginning like you know from 16 17 8 like quite early on and so I remember coming off it like I had a bit of a hard time and fasting was something that I leaned on to be able to um, bring me back into balance and it just was a personal thing that worked for me but I don't know if you have any recommendations for people to instead of like going back on if they don't want to choose that of a healthy way to balance out. It's a great question and it's something I'm really grateful that I did was I really took care of myself in the months leading up to to coming off the pill because it is it is a huge transition you know as I just said you're literally suppressing ovulation when you're taking hormonal contraception and for most women they they haven't just been on it for like six months or a year it's been quite a long time and so for me it was 10 years that my body hadn't ovulated for you know that I hadn't had that ebb and flow of estrogen and progesterone so yeah it is a transition certainly coming off it and then you know getting your body to kickstart your female reproductive system again. So I do think it's important to take it, um, yeah, to just be conscious of of the transition that you're putting your body through and to give it as much love and nurturance that you can. I would definitely recommend gut health. uh, That You know, we know that the pill erodes our gut health. And so it's really important to be taking a good quality probiotic and eating lots of like whole foods and fermented foods and avoiding things that upset um, you know, healthy gut flora and that might be something people can read up more about or even work with a practitioner on who can help you with that. But definitely gut health is a big one. Also liver health, mm-hmm. um, helping the, like our liver is responsible for the, um, like the flushing of hormones from our system. So we have to be giving it loads of love so that it can do the job of helping to eliminate any excess hormones in the body. Um, and so, you know, avoiding things like too much coffee and alcohol and sugar and just like giving it lots of love with lots of good herbs and good quality greens and beets and all those sorts of things. And then I would also say taking a good quality multivitamin because because the pill erodes our gut health, it's also eroding our ability to actually absorb vitamins and minerals, which was something I was just so shocked by when I came off it and learned that for like the last 10 years, I had been limiting the amount of vitamins and minerals my body was actually able to absorb. So that's okay. You know, we can work with that. There's no need to get caught up in that, but just start to really supplement the body just with a really good quality multivitamin, maybe a fish oil for some like really good quality fats. So it's just like it's the basics. Of, of good health but just maybe like cranking those up a bit and just avoiding things that you know do upset your gut and that do like give your like tax your liver um and just adding lots and lots like good quality water you know getting enough sleep taking care of your circadian rhythm that 24 hour hormonal cycle making sure that you're sleeping well and that um taking care of your 24 hour hormones because if that's off, if our you know our circadian rhythm is off, that can definitely impact 
the menstrual cycle too. And just being aware that it might take a little bit of time for your cycle to regulate again. It can take a couple of years, to be honest. Yep. And again, if we understand how long some people actually take hormonal contraception, that's you know, it's understandable that it might take the body some time to, to adapt again. For me, it took 12 months for my period to even come back. I stopped taking hormonal contraception and my period didn't come back for a whole year. So, you know, and then it took another year for my cycles to, to sort of regulate. So it can take time. Um, I think it's by working with maybe a naturopath or a nutritionist mm. or somebody who can help you through that process um, can be really useful. A Chinese medicine practitioner as well, I would recommend. That's who I worked with in that time. Uh, somebody who can just help to get the inner reserves of your body super high and so you're super well so that your body has the resources that it needs to be able to successfully ovulate and menstruate again and you know you can and you will get things back to to like a regular rhythm but it might just take a little bit of time yeah you've tampered with the natural cycle right and it's like what's happened but I'm the I was the same it took me maybe two years as well like 12 months mm -hmm. of getting it back to a getting it back and then like um another year to probably get rid of pain and like the unhealthiness of it and then and then finally find the rhythm and the and the the monthly rhythm where it was like very like I had no idea I was like is it going to come I don't know who knows <laughs> um and then um then the step beyond that for me was understanding what we've spoken about today so I can build an actual relationship with it and not have shame around it and not have this fear around it not have like the hate around it and 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 I think it changed how I show up and and how I it changed my relationship with my body because mm -hmm. of just understanding and appreciating and um, being grateful and seeing the gifts in what it can bring to our lives instead of it being this thing we want to shut away. I appreciate you speaking to the to the length of time that this can take. It's definitely you know, menstrual cycle awareness and appreciating our, our periods definitely isn't an overnight. Thing. And I certainly wouldn't expect anybody who's brand new to this concept to suddenly overnight just like love having their period. And it does it does take time. And um, my mentor Alexandra calls it like an initiatory process. Like every month is this just another like incremental inch into that initiation of, of really like coming home to your body. And um, that's great. I love that. I love that it's not just something that happens overnight. Like it is a journey. It is a process. It is this like path that we that we take. And every cycle offers us a new opportunity to to really love more of who we are and also to really face the parts of ourselves that maybe aren't our favorite parts. Um, and so, you know, and to soften into those as well. And it and it takes us all through our our female life journey is right up until we're moving into perimenopause and menopause. And that's a whole nother transition and a whole nother podcast episode. But the more that we work with our cycle in, in these fertile years, you know, as we're cycling and moving through this process, accepting like, you know, the journey that we're on, then certainly that transition into those, those menopausal years is going to not only be easier, but also to come with its own source of power, which is really exciting too. Yeah. Claire, this is so good. I love that we're sharing this wisdom today. And I know you have a book that is out, coming out. It's, it's being birthed into the world. And I would love for you to share um, where people can go to find out more about that, to find out more about you. And then maybe like your most favorite, if you do have one, favorite takeaway that you learned from the birth of that book. Mm, gosh, wow. So the book is called 50 Things You Need to Know About Periods. And I wanted to create a book, Sam, that, it felt like playful and warm and fun and accessible. I think there's some, like, I know that there are some, you can see them on my bookshelf right now, some incredible resources when it comes to menstrual cycle awareness. Um, for a lot of people, it's sometimes a bit too in-depth and maybe a bit too clinical and just like too much information. The, the magic of this work is that actually like, it's just a matter of daily charting every day. So I wanted to create a book that helps people to understand the four seasons that we've spoken about, how to chart, what to chart, some superpowers that you might observe, some of the vulnerabilities, like how to work with your period, how to set intentions, all of that, the moon, everything we've spoken about today. Um, and so it's gorgeous. It's, it's hardcover. It's fully illustrated. It's really colourful. It's the kind of book that you know, you would want to give to like a sister or a girlfriend or a daughter even as well and to really like 
yeah, love and cherish. Um, so I'm really proud of it. It's out. Yeah, it's out now. Mm. And it's just so exciting to see it out in the world, to see yeah. people of like women of all ages reading it and taking something from it. So you, you can buy it in bookstores everywhere or order it in if your bookstore doesn't have it. Mm. Otherwise at clairebaker.com slash book, then I've got links to order it there and over on my website you can learn more about taking a course with me I've got a free cycle charting class if you're brand new to charting that you can take and like a free charting calendar to download otherwise I'm always on Instagram at underscore Claire Baker underscore and I really enjoy sharing where I am in my cycle and how I'm taking care of myself that day and hearing what other people are in their cycle and doing like check-ins because I think it's really helpful to hear from other people like we just shared you know I know that you're entering your summer and I'm coming out of mine and our conversation would have been really different they say and imagine if like say we're on the other side if we were both in our winter I'm sure we would have had a really different chat <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> like if we're both in our summer so I love yeah I love starting those sorts of conversations in terms of the book the gosh, something that I really learned from that process is to get over myself, to be honest. I had to like continuously check my ego throughout the book writing mm -hmm. process and just constantly ask, like, is this actually valuable to, to somebody who is who is new to this work? Or am I just trying to sound clever? I think that's something, or like put all of the information and all of the knowledge and the study and the training and the, everything that I've learned over these last years is that actually helpful? Like, can I, can I strip this back? You know, can I just take this back and back and back and make it so simple and so valuable and so powerful and remembering the power of, of the foundations and of having a beginner's mindset and just not trying to like, you know, be somewhere that is actually trying to meet people where they are and not try and be something, you know, that I consider to be more extraordinary, but actually, really remembering that that's my ego just getting carried away and like the simplicity is is what makes it so powerful in this work yes that's such a good realization and um definitely something that I really appreciate and honor about you is that the way that you talk about it is so simple to understand and easy to understand that it makes me more curious about wanting to understand it opposed to it just being like Ugh, what did you just say and then make me want to run like the way that you've explained it is so simple and beautiful um, but I also really want to honor you and appreciate you for the work that you do in this, because I know for me, like when, like what you said, this is a book that you could gift your daughter or gift somebody. It's like, I, when I was growing up, I don't remember ever w talking about periods or like having a place to talk about it. It was like this thing that we didn't really talk about, you know, and there wasn't good education around it in schools and, um, resources I think for this is just work from my experience and so like the fact that you have this beautiful book that you could gift a daughter or gift somebody that is moving into this phase that's easy to understand I think for me as I look back on when I was going in this initiation of um, of getting it the first time would be something that I would really appreciate and um, probably would have could have changed the relationship at that point and that's something if I was to have a daughter would be really conscious about making sure that there was that awareness around that. So thank you so much for doing the work that you do, because I think as women, like we need it. Mm, you're right. Yeah, we do. I would have loved to have received a book like this at that age. I you know I was taught how to manage my period, but I was certainly never given any understanding of the menstrual cycle in its entirety. No, no not at all. <laughs> that would have just been so cool. And you know, women are, you know, young girls are receiving this information now, which, you know, I'm so happy to contribute to that. Yeah. Because it's a it's a empowering thing. Whereas mm -hmm. I think before when we didn't understand the whole view of it, it was like this annoying thing. Like, oh, I can't, you know, like there's a, there's a uh, that thing about it. You want to hide it. You don't want to talk to boys about it. Like, obviously, yeah. But when you understand this, I don't know if it's just because I'm older, but like, if I understand it, like the, if we talked about the actual power within it as, and sharing that with young girls, then I think that is amazing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's again, it's focusing on that whole cycle rather than just one phase again I love my period but like I don't want to be bleeding all of the time either like no are we not <laughs> you do. give me the whole cycle give me the whole cycle I would have loved to have yeah. and I do wonder I look back at my moodiness 
um, as a teen. And I do wonder if there was maybe like a correlation between that and yeah. my premenstrual weeks, but you know, you can only guess. I'm sure yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you sharing everything you did today. Is there anything, any last kind of words of wisdom you want to share with us before we wrap up? I just think the most important thing for women to understand is just how easy this can be to integrate into your life. You know, you don't need to overhaul things. It is just checking in every day. Like we said, what day am I on today? How do I feel? You know, what do I need to do today? And that's enough. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you for your radiance of your summer. Good luck in your autumn. Enjoy the softness <laughs> and the flow. <laughs> and thank you for joining me. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Sam. It's been so much fun. Mwah.